I guess the reports are that the Mets are more inclined to go after free agents and not plunder, pillage and plunder their prospect system, their farm system, and try and like just ease up on giving away all our young talent, which I agree with. If you have the money now, which we do, go after the free agents and try to hold on to and preserve your farm system and bring up the prospects. And, you know, the Braves, the Braves have been doing it for years. So, and they've been, uh, they've been successful. So I'm kind of like, it's almost like maybe the Francisco Lindor deal is not going to happen now. I was like, so 99.9% positive that that thing was going to go through. And now it's looking like maybe not. Oh, anyway, we can still do it. So here are seven potential trade proposals for Francisco Lindor. I'm not going to go through all seven. I'm just going to go over the one that matters most to my fans. Not my fans, Mets fans. A superstar splash for the new look Mets. So the Mets would get Lindor and catcher Austin Hedges and the Indians would get Oh, Andre Jimenez, Jeff McNeil, Pete Crow Armstrong, and Riley Gilliam. So basically, our shortstop of the future, who's already pretty much proven himself, Jeff McNeil, who's like, we've always said, untradeable. Pete Crow Armstrong, our number five prospect, and Riley Gilliam, our number 25 prospect. If that is the proposal, kindly exit the premises. Get the fuck out of here, dude. It's got, it, there's, no to Jimenez or McNeil, and you're not getting both Crow Armstrong and Gilliam. I'd be more cl- inclined to give up Gilliam, J.D. Davis, Ahmed Rosario, and I probably won't get the deal done, but that's what I would offer. I want them to come back to you. Why it could work. This trade could give both teams multiple pieces that they both need. No shenanigans, especially if the Mets could get Lindor to sign a long-term extension after a trade. Could be a win-win. Mets get a superstore shortstop, face the franchise. Instant impact. Uh, one of the top defensive and framing catchers in the majors in Austin Hedges, uh, which has been obviously a major weakness for us for, I mean, they say recent seasons. We have not had a really good defensive catcher. Gary Carter? I don't know. Like, (laughs) it's been a while. Indians get a promising shortstop in Jimenez under team control of 2026. McNeil can play wherever, quote unquote. Crow Armstrong, high ceiling outfield prospect. Gilliam is a pitching prospect close to the majors who could balance the deal since it also includes his two more years. Huh? Who says no? Well, here it is. Who says no? The Mets. This is from David Adler. Sorry. There are a couple of hangups here, even aside from McNeil being a fan favorite for the New York faithful. Yeah. Uh, it might be, might be overreaching to ask the Mets to give up Crow Armstrong first round draft pick just this year. Yeah, dude. Well, and he brings up Jared Kalenic, obviously. Why not? Clinic looks like he'll be a future star at the Manors. Yeah, we only hear about that every other week. Crom is only 18. Could be a future star too. Yeah, I don't know. No, no, no. Uh, there was a wild trade idea here, which I don't even know if I should address because it's like a fucking wild trade. Cool, man. We're not into trades, bro. There's one trade we want and we're not giving up all that shit for Lindor, I'll tell you that much. A's and Mets could transform each other's off seasons. The A's site and and the SB Nation Network, I think it's called Athletics Nation or some garbage. The subhead is, this is completely unrealistic. It's from Alex Hall, unless it makes total sense. Oh, all right. Let's see what the deal is here. So the A's get Dom Smith. The Mets get Chris Davis, DH, an outfielder, and a left-handed pitcher. AJ Puck is a left-handed pitcher. I hope it's Puck. For Chris Davis, who... I need to look up because, I mean, is Chris Davis the same Chris Davis from yesteryear? You know what I mean? Is he still the same guy? The MVP candidate from 2018 when he had 48 ding-dongs? I mean, he's going to be 33 in 21. He did not play a whole lot. He only played half the games last year. But he did have 23 home runs and 73 RBIs in 2019. So is he, like, on the decline? I mean, he's not in his prime. I mean, he hit... There was three straight seasons of 40-plus homers and 100-plus RBIs. But it, it's it's looking like he's regressing and he's going back into, like, yeah. Ugh, I'm not too crazy about it, if we're being honest. Left fielder and designated hitter. Again, this goes back to, like, the Mar- Marcel Ozuna discussion we had a couple of weeks ago where it's like, do we need a left fielder and a designated hitter? No, we need a center fielder. Plain and simple. Who's this guy? Kenha, though. Mark Kenha. Right-handed batter. Recent history of success gets negative marked in center field. I mean, no. 
yeah. So this guy wasn't lying. This is a fucking crazy idea, and I don't want nothing to do with it. 